The first time I ever cried while watching a piece of media was when I first saw the film Up. My grandparents had decided to take my younger cousins, my brother, and myself to the theater to watch it. At the time, I was a bit of a brat when it came to what movies I enjoyed. Basically, if it wasn't Star Wars, Jurassic Park, or Lord of the Rings, I didn't think it was worth my time. That of course changed within the first 10 minutes of watching Up. I'm telling you this story because it represents something important. It was the first time I ever stopped to realize that film was more than just a medium for the power fantasy that I craved. It took almost six years for me to have that same experience with a video game. I've made it clear on several occasions that Sacred Stones is my favorite Fire Emblem game. While it is nowhere near as well designed as its three predecessors and its successor, there is an aspect to Sacred Stones that sets it apart from all of its contemporaries, and that is how it handles its villain. Leon is an enigma. He seems to both fit and subvert every single aspect of what characterizes a stereotypical Fire Emblem villain. He's no corrupt king, yet he leads his nation into ruin. He's no elderly, all-powerful evil sorcerer, but rather a scared young adult with a knack for dark magic. What makes Leon so compelling to me anyways is that he is simultaneously both the series' most cliched villain, yet also its most subversive. Contrary to almost every other Fire Emblem villain, Leon enters Sacred Stones in a very mundane fashion. We see him mainly appear through flashbacks, and what glimpses of him in the present we do see here and there, he never speaks until far later into the game when his true nature is exposed. Throughout the flashbacks, we learn that Leon has been friends with the Mystery Twins for several years prior to the beginning of the game, and it goes out of this way to show how timid, shy, and frail Leon is, how he longs to be athletic as Ephraim, and how he secretly pines for Erica. While Fire Emblem has no shortage of villains who have passed with the heroes, that past is only ever circumstantial or inherently antagonistic. Leon, by comparison, almost appears as a non-threat, and much of what we hear about him in the first half of the game is mostly in regards to how caring and pure he really is. I think of the many flashbacks, the one that jumps out to me the most is the one where Ephraim and Leon are helping each other with their studying. The scene doesn't really do much to further the game's lore or really establish any sort of revelations in regards to Leon's character. All it does is affirm stuff we already know and just show us how Ephraim and Leon behave as friends. How Leon helps Ephraim with his homework. It's not groundbreaking and it's not earth shattering or even that important to the story as a whole. But what it does is it humanizes Leon. It creates this sort of casual and interpersonal connection between him and Ephraim that other villains in the series just don't have. And it is that casual and interpersonalness that makes Leon feel less like a force in the story and more like a living, breathing human. Leon is treated almost like an additional member of the cast. He's practically given supports in this way with each of these flashbacks. And this philosophy of treating him so differently than any other Fire Emblem villain not only frames how different his character is, but also serves to build him up as one of the most three-dimensional characters in the entire game. It is through this scene and many others like it that Leon's fall from grace plays out in essentially real time, with careful steps to show his most important relationships right from the start, his father and the twins, all of which are immediate and important to the story. Conversely, in the backstory of another fan favorite, Zelgius, it is presented in every way Leon isn't, especially in terms of character relationships. Zelgius' relationship to Sephiran is a reveal, not a development on something that was already there, and Zelgius' backstory serves nothing to further his relationship to Ike, which, mind you, only exists because Ike is the son of Grail. Now, none of these make Zelgius a bad villain, far from it. They are only there to illustrate just how different Leon really is. Zelgius has a tragic backstory, 
Leon has a tragic character arc. Pacing the aspects of Leon's relationships with the twins throughout the story through the use of flashbacks is pertinent to establishing a better picture of who Leon is and what he means to Ephraim and Erica. The three of them are perfect foils to each other. Ephraim is brash, yet Leon is calculated. Erica is considerate, but Ephraim is confident and lacks social aptitude. Leon has no confidence, but he is observant, and Erica has people skills, but remains naive. They make up for each other's weaknesses and complement each other's strengths, and we are shown this from Ephraim studying with Lion to the CG of their first meeting, summarizing their most important traits through one clean visual. All of this serves to paint Leon as a dynamic character. Contrast what he was with what he has become and understanding the complexity of Leon's relationship with Ephraim and Erica makes the realization of what has happened to him in their absence all the more heartbreaking. For those unfamiliar with Sacred Stones, about a third of the way through the game, a route split occurs, where you can follow either Ephraim or his sister Erica. While on the surface, this only seems to alter which chapters you play and which events you see transpire between the twins' reunion, this is in fact not the case. There are actually intense script changes that occur in both paths, even when the mystery twins are eventually reunited. And Leon is at the centerpiece of this. To understand what makes Leon the best Fire Emblem villain, it is pertinent to establish what could ruin everything the setup he has going for him has created. And luckily for us, we can see exactly this on Erica's path. So as to not beat around the bush, it is revealed early on that Leon is in fact the host of the soul of the Demon King, transferred into his body after a mishap during a necromantic ritual that he partook in in an attempt to save his dying father from illness. While his intentions were pure, Leon was ultimately changed by the ritual, and in Erica's path this manifests in the form of Leon losing control over his body and his actions becoming a puppet to the Demon King's will. This is poorly executed for two reasons. First of all, it implies Leon can be saved. Whether through exorcism or some other means, the fact that Leon is possessed creates the expectation that the players will find a way to save him. The Leon they face isn't Leon, but something wearing Leon's skin. And while it's a great twist that he can in fact not be saved at the end, it only serves to anger the player and in the worst case scenario, ruin their immersion especially when it is well established that Leon is not in control of his own actions, yet Erica still trusts him with the Sacred Stone of Renes. The second and more important reason why this doesn't work is that by having Leon not be in control of his actions, he therefore cannot be held accountable for them. In many ways, this negates any agency Leon has as a character, not to mention it flies in the face of the nature of Leon's possession in Erica's path, Multiple times, Leon is able to momentarily break free of the Demon King's control. So couldn't he theoretically go back on any orders the Demon King gave while using his body? Again, this breaks immersion. There is nothing to suggest, at least from the information we're given on Erica's path, that Leon could ever be complacent with the actions he takes. Again, this only serves to break immersion and formulate more questions than it answers, not to mention create a discrepancy in a character that should really not exist. Framing a character, especially the main antagonist, as a victim of circumstance, where their actions can be hand-waved or forgiven at the drop of the hat, cheats the viewer. It is this reason why the trope of another, eviler guy is actually pulling the strings the entire time is so despised. It devalues and practically disregards the action of the previous villain as completely unimportant. By taking agency away from a villain, you lose the audience's investment in them. And unless your story is over 50 hours long, you risk overdeveloping a character that you will eventually cast aside or even worse, underdeveloping that character because you know you're going to cast them aside. Now, I'm not trying to imply that there is no merit in playing Erica's path. There certainly is. The additional development it gives to Kylak, Volter, Joshua, and Cormag is excellent. However, it gives that development to those characters at the expense of Leon. And considering Leon is, among all things, the emotional core of Sacred Stone's conflict, the fact that he feels underdeveloped or cast aside on Erica's path 
really hurts the overall structure of that narrative in my opinion and I don't think it's a really necessary sacrifice to make if you just want more of Joshua and Cormac. Apart from offering a bit of insight into Leon's crush on Erica, his story in Erica's path really doesn't do much to develop him as a character. It merely places him in a situation he can't escape from, then asks the viewer to be sad about it. It does nothing to further his dynamic with Ephraim or Erica, or serve to demonstrate the effects of them leaving him alone to his own devices. It doesn't even explore his relationship with his father, the literal inciting incident of the conflict throughout the entirety of Sacred Stones. In short, Erica's path takes the framework of Leon and builds a sob story about a scared kid who dabbled a bit too freely in the dark arts. A sob story that creates more questions than answers and does very little to build upon the foundation that the game has set earlier. The redemption for all of this, however, comes from Ephraim's path. Where Erica's path tossed aside the groundwork of Leon's character for the most part, Ephraim's path instead revels in it, and it is all the more beautiful for it. Leon first comes to the head of the game's plot in the chapter Father and Son. Up until now, he's been a quiet presence, only seen in flashbacks, which, mind you, we get a lot more of in Ephraim's path, further fleshing out Leon's already layered personality. As Vigard's body dissolves into necromantic dust, Seth and Ephraim decide to sweep the rest of the capital in hopes of finding anyone who still remains in the castle, specifically Leon. However, it seems that they get exactly what they wish. As they encounter Leon, it is framed so beautifully, and I enjoy the use of Leon's evil portrait here much more in Erica's path. In an essence, Leon's evil portrait is everything he isn't. His hair is messy, his eyes are sunken, and his face is locked in a complete smirk. It's sinister, and it juxtaposes with normal Leon's kind and clean demeanor so well that while it is used in one way to show that Leon is possessed by another entity, I think the use of it here to show that Leon is instead in a completely different mindset consumed by his ambition, that it makes him feel all the more ominous because he is in control of his own actions here. As Leon goes on and on about perhaps making the world his plaything, he is clearly taunting Ephraim with nothing but empty threats. It is also clear that everything Leon says is a means to rile up Ephraim so that when Ephraim does come to a point where he has to kill Leon, his guilt is all but erased because the friend that he knew is long gone. This is clearly intentional by Leon and is not likely the actual course of events. And when Leon does get a rise out of Ephraim, he slips away by teleporting. We then follow Ephraim and Seth as they go to a cell where they meet the Arcanist Noel, one of Leon's inner circle and one of the people who bore witness to Leon's strange ritual to revive his father. Noel delivers a haunting account of the events that led to Leon's fall from grace. The most important line from Noel's monologue here is, I remember the joy in Prince Leon's eyes when he spoke of using the Dark Stone to save lives. It is here that we learn of his greatest flaw, his inferiority complex. Leon fears the thought of having to take his father's place. He believes that due to his own lack of willpower and physical strength that the burden of Grotto would be too much for him to bear. How could he lead an entire country if in a sparring match he loses to someone as inexperienced as Erica? We get a taste of this in Leon's relationship and interactions with Ephraim. Leon idolizes him. Ephraim is every bit the proud successor to a kingdom Leon believes he isn't, and that is important going forwards. Understanding why Leon doesn't believe himself is crucial to understanding his character. His father is one of the greatest emperors of Grotto in recent memory. Dialogue from Duacell, Selina, and Glenn is testament to demonstrating this. And to anyone who is asked to take up that mantle, much less someone who isn't anywhere near mentally prepared to do so, they are under a ticking clock where the situation could damn near break them. And that is exactly what happened to Leon. He was faced with his father's death and the knowledge that a powerful earthquake was to strike Grotto sometime afterwards. 
with all of Leon's character traits in mind, his lack of self-confidence, his introverted habits, his frail physique, his father represents security and stability. Leon can't dream of living in Grotto if his father isn't leading it, and as a result, Leon falls down his dark path. When Noel finally reveals the nature of the Darkstone and the Demon King inhabits Leon's body, we are faced with what at first seems to retread the same mistakes as Erica's path, but instead it doesn't. What follows in Ephraim's path is actually something quite twisted when you consider to stop and think about the implications. Leon fakes his possession, not in the sense that he isn't the host of an ancient demon, but instead he fakes being controlled by it. If the relationship between Leon and the Demon King in Erica's path is that of Puppet and Puppet Master, in Ephraim's route it is more akin to Host and Parasite. Having a tapeworm doesn't mean the tapeworm controls your mind, it merely causes you to perhaps seek out something you wouldn't normally. And that is exactly what is going on in Ephraim's path. This one small change alters everything and recontextualizes almost every single one of the atrocities Leon unleashes upon Magvel. Because all the pain, all the death that Leon indirectly and directly causes, is completely of his own design and accord. For Mortis can only manipulate Leon's emotional state. He can turn his admiration of Ephraim into jealousy, turn his crush in Erica into lustful self-pility. In essence, kill a caring heart. What represents this aspect of Leon's character best in my eyes is how Leon handles getting the Stone of Renee in Ephraim's path. Prior to the event, best girl Lara Kell bequeaths to Ephraim the nature of being possessed by the Demon King, that the very soul is devoured leaving only an empty husk. And right on cue, Leon appears, still faking possession, mind you. He taunts Ephraim. It is worth keeping in mind that at this point, Ephraim has been through hell and back. He's seen the horrible, unnatural result of resurrection in the form of both Vigard and Orson's wife, Monica. He's been betrayed far too many times to count, and he just wants his friend back. All Ephraim wants is the same shy kid to help him with his homework again, and Leon is well of this. He knows Ephraim loses his cool easily, and Leon plays every card in his hand to make that happen. When Ephraim does finally snap, pouring every ounce of his heart out for why he misses Leon, he plays right into Leon's trap. Leon basically casts Hold Person, and Ephraim fails his save. The exchange we get after Leon breaks the Sacred Stone, in a way, is both triumphant and chilling. Listen, Ephraim. I've always loved you. I've always hated you. I've always looked up to you. I wanted to be just like you. Then one day I realized, someone like me could never become someone like you. You and Erica are... overpowering. You blinded me with your radiance. How could I live in your shadows and not seethe with jealousy? I acquired the Dark Stone. The Demon King began to eat my soul and corrupt my flesh. I almost vanished beneath his mantle. Then I remembered you, and my mind blazed into wakefulness. All at once, I shouted out, I will not be devoured. And just as I was about to lose myself to the Demon King, I drove him back. The Demon King's desires are simple, foul, but uncomplicated. He wants nothing but the destruction, conquest, and subjugation of man. These shallow desires are nothing to the dreams of the human heart, and of the two roads I had seen, I chose the latter. But I didn't want to appear before you here the role of Leon, Leon, the piteous victim, the Demon King, the fiendish villain. It was all an act, high drama for you all, to suit this grand occasion. That's right, Ephraim. I'm the Demon King. The Demon King is me. To liken it to a stage play is apt. Leon had played Ephraim for a fool in a way that some ancient evil never could. This moment feels so impactful because for once in the entire story, both through the gameplay and through cutscenes, Ephraim has always been top dog. He has always been the master of every situation he finds himself in. And when that expectation is subverted, paired beautifully with the same subversion of a trope on the other path, the shock is immense to say the least. There's a reason why this same scene had far less impact on Erica's path, because it isn't an oh shit moment. Erica's track record makes the result 
more predictable and does nothing to shatter or challenge Erica's values of a character, or even create a situation that would be specific to Leon. Because naivety is so present within Erica's actions, her trust of Leon doesn't feel like an exception or something she'd only reserve for a close friend. It just feels consistent what she's already done. And that's not what this moment should achieve, considering it portrays the heroes losing. Leon does everything right in Ephraim's path. His character is enriched, his interplay with Ephraim is great, and every promise the flashbacks make is made up for and then some. In other words, on Ephraim's path, Leon is damn near perfect, and Intelligent Systems knows it. The reason I say that Intelligent Systems is aware of Ephraim's path being better has everything to do with his quotes and heroes. Art and voice acting wise, Leon is perhaps the best transition to heroes I think any character has ever made. His voice actor, Mark P. Witten, is a relative unknown, but he turns out perhaps one of the most powerhouse performances Heroes has on display. Let's start with a few of his quotes. <laughs> Death was coming for us all. I just wanted to save everyone. Do not attempt to startle me. Ephraim is strong. I have always admired him. Erica is so kind. Even to someone like me. The weight of the crown is immense. I have no right to be alive, but I shall remain here for as long as you wish. Apart from his reference to Erica, almost every single one of these references revelations from Ephraim's path. But what makes me giddy about Leon's portrayal in Heroes are his critical quotes, with each one referencing a different line from his boss conversation with Ephraim. I am the Demon King. No one will stand in my way. My caring heart has died. Well... Come then. And as a final stinger, one of his normal quotes references his death quote. Where? Where did I go wrong? When I heard that line spoken aloud for the first time, as with my experience with Up, I cried. As I did when I first read that same line upon beating Sacred Stones for the first time. While Erica's path may be disappointing, Ephraim's path offers a look into one of Fire Emblem's most complex and tragic antagonists. I think to anyone watching this video, it is very clear that I have a personal bias to Leon, and well, that couldn't be any more true. Leon to me represents a version of myself, one I've left behind thanks in part to my experience with Sacred Stones. I played this game during a very dark time in my life. I was in an accelerated education program, and I constantly lived in fear of not measuring up to the standards of my classmates. I questioned my academic ability, and I was constantly made fun of for my lack of athletic ability despite my normal, healthy stature. I shut myself in, and I had nearly monthly episodes of unrealistic panic and anxiety. Were it not for my hobbies keeping me going, living for each next weekend, I could break away and seek escape. I doubt Leon's arc would have impacted me the way it did. When you see yourself in a character the story frames as broken, alone, and the villain, it's shocking. It hit me in a way that I never thought a video game could. And when Leon said that all-important line, where did I go wrong? It was too much for me, and it was in that moment that I realized I couldn't live as I had been. I couldn't let myself become what Leon had become. It is because of this that I am the person I am today, perhaps that I even exist today. Think whatever you may about Leon, but know that there is nothing that can ever take away the reason that Leon is perhaps my favorite video game character of all time. Thank you so much for sticking it out to the end. This video has been my lifeblood for over a month. Just writing the script has been going through hell and back, dredging up like terrible past experiences and it's just had me in such a way for over a month and I'm finally glad that it's out and finished uh, for everyone to see and I'm really proud of it. So anyways, <laughs> my name is Zerk. 
I will see you in the next video. And as always, happy hunting.